Hey everyone. I'm just out having a walk with the Ruby, just reflecting on my potato situation. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will already know by now that I put a poll out with a picture and a video of my potatoes and they weren't looking that great. So I did a poll because I wasn't sure what to do and it's all come back and been like 100% blight, well almost, I think it was like 87%. Um, so I decided to take them out. <laughs> I couldn't risk it spreading, if it is blight, onto my tomatoes and it's the first year of growing potatoes so I'm a little bit gutted but I'm a little bit surprised as well actually because I specifically chose this variety for their blight resistance and they've got blight. So I did a bit of research on it. The foliage can get it and it's not too much of a problem if it happens like later on in the season. So like, you know, around 20 weeks when you typically would be looking to harvest them anyway. But obviously mine have only been in the ground for about 14 weeks. So it's a little bit early um, to be getting these problems. So yeah, I decided to pull them out. Um, there is some beautiful tubers in there, but I'm not really sure are they edible. So has anybody got any experience with this? Um, I'd be really interested to know if you can actually eat them or not because they look perfect, they look super nice and yeah, I'd be, I'd hate to like have to throw them away. It cropped up like, I'd say probably Friday, Saturday, I kind of noticed it and then it's literally just like taken over the whole, the whole, I'd say 80% of one plant and then it's spread to the two others. So it's definitely something going on. Whether it's blight or not, I, I don't know. Like, I just don't have enough experience to know if it is or not. Um, but I just think, given the small space, how close everything is, how hot and humid it has been, it's it's some sort of fungus anyway, or, you know. Um, but I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who got back to me on my Instagram post because it was so helpful and all your advice was like amazing and basically all of you said just get rid of it <laughs> and it needs to be treated ASAP so that's why I decided to take it out. I've just realised whilst I've been talking to you with my sad story about the potatoes I've just seen in these hedgerows that there's like the most amazing like wild strawberries. I'm gonna to have to show you them. Look. Wild strawberries, how awesome is that? I have been looking for years for wild strawberries and wild raspberries and they are literally on my doorstep. Oh, I'm attached to a nettle. Oh, look, there's loads, look. I mean, they're tiny, but I think wild strawberries are small anyway. How beautiful are they? There's loads of them. All in the back and everything. Oh. I'm so glad I started, picked up the camera to film today and show you because we never would have found this. How beautiful are they? I'm trying to kind of, ouchie. Oh wow. Well. I was just about to start doing the brassica cage, but I guess I won't be here now. <laughs> hey everyone, we're back in the tiny garden and it's a different day. <laughs> um, a more positive start, I suppose, to um, the previous footage you just saw um, of my very, very sad looking potato plants. Um, so I've just grabbed a coffee and a little bit of breakfast. I'll actually show you my breakfast. Um, I kind of have this most days. So I do a little berry bowl and I'm so thrilled because obviously all the berries have come into um, like fruit, like they're ready to pick. Like I'm, I actually have probably more than I can actually eat, go through in a day. So today I've got, so in here, it's like a little fruit berry bowl. And then, so I've got obviously cut up strawberries, I just cut them in half. And then I have two tablespoons of kefir and I have two tablespoons of natural Greek yogurt and then just a sprinkling of seeds then on the side. So I think there's like pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and I think there's two other types. I think maybe sesame and I'm not actually quite sure what maybe linseed I think the other one is. And that's just a mix I buy already and then I just sprinkle it over. And this 
is so good and it fills me up right up until lunchtime. So it's actually like a bit of a late, it's more of a brunch for me now today. It's about 11ish and it's just started to rain. Okay, the rain seems to want to hold off for a little bit, so we'll keep going. So what a week I've had in the garden. Um, obviously things have taken a little bit of a turn with the weather and the potatoes obviously have not done so well and dug those out. But I also had a slight problem with my tomato. Obviously we know that obviously I planted all my main tomatoes and they're the ones that I really, really want to do well. But I obviously had so many spare plants. I had a little tomato in just a tiny little pot. I don't even know the literage of it. And I just thought, oh look, I'll pop it in there and even if I get one truss of fruit off of it, um, that'll be great. And I, I just don't have the heart to throw um, plants away. And I felt like it was like, I'm already after giving over a load of <laughs> plants to all my friends at work and my family. So I was like, look, I'll just do a little, little pot up and see if it creates something. Um, actually, one of you guys actually said that to me in the comments in the last video with the late sowing they were like don't throw them away put them in a tiny pot and see how they do so I still actually have those I've got about four or five of those left so I can actually pot those ones up as well but anyway this one was one of the red cherries and it has got some sort of disease on it I don't really know what the disease is but obviously I did a little garden google and I think it could be blight and the reason I think that is because it was literally just down next to the three potatoes that obviously I disposed of. And it's got like this black marking, kind of speckled marking on the leaf. So obviously a slight panic set in because I thought, oh no, <laughs> it's gonna go over the whole garden. So I, I isolated it because at that point I wasn't sure. So when I got back from chatting to you guys on my walk, came home and I just bought that plant inside the house. Now, I've no idea if that's actually the, what you're supposed to do, but I was like, it's better to be in the house than out here spreading its germs to everything else in the garden. So I bought it in and I left it for two days just to see what way it would go. And it just seemed to have gotten worse and worse and worse. And then some of the leaves were getting darker and darker and darker. So I just thought, you know what, cut the losses and get rid of it. So obviously I disposed of it obviously in a plastic bag, um, it's gone out in general waste, like not with anything else, and disinfected hands and pots and everything that it touched. But obviously I, I've showed it to you on the table. So obviously I've disinfected all of that. Um, so yeah, slight tragedy of a week with plants this week. Now, technically I don't think I'm to blame for any of that. I think like that just comes through the wind and the weather and that kind of thing. So yeah, a little bit disappointed, but I feel like I think I've caught it early enough. I've been looking at my tomatoes in the main bed around the corner and the two that we sowed in the last video in the skinny bed. So they look okay. Some of the leaves don't look like as plush as they should, but I think obviously those plants have been growing since March. So like, I think they're just getting a little, they're just slightly older leaves and I think they're fine. So no black residue on the leaves yet on my main tomatoes. So I think, think we might have just got away with this um so yeah there's the disasters of the garden this week um yeah a little bit I was a little I felt a little bit defeated but like I feel better now like it's a new day like glorious week for weather like highs of like 23 24 and then like comes the weekend and it's just like decides to rain on me the minute I left work on Friday like four o'clock Friday the heavens opened I was just like it's cursed isn't it <laughs> it's always the way so yeah, um, yeah, I've got a few bits I want to do with you guys today. So what I want to do is I want to build a brassica cage. So obviously that's to protect the bits in the main bed. So I've got these really cool connector things that I want to use with bamboo. I want to keep the bamboo theme just to keep it that little bit softer for the garden, a little bit nicer to look at, uh, in my opinion, obviously. <laughs> Everyone's open to their own opinions. Um, so yeah, and then I picked up a new net because I was trying to find another EnviroMesh net that I have that's currently over the strawberries. Now, it was only when I picked up the new net that I actually thought that the nets over the strawberries is probably too, like, densely together. Like, the holes are so small that actually it doesn't let any pollinators in. So, obviously, there's a second flush of flowers coming on those. So, I'm actually pleased that there wasn't another EnviroMesh net in the shop because I've got one that's got slightly bigger holes in it now and I'll be able to swap the nets over. Um... But yeah, strawberries are doing fantastically and I wanted to show you those too. Do you remember I said in the garden tour in May 
that um, the, those two flowers were going to be big ones. Well, look at these strawberries. Now, one looks like it's almost ready to pick, and the other one will obviously be ready very soon. But look at the size of them. Aren't they unbelievable? Well chuffed with those. And somebody actually asked me, how do you know a strawberry? Like, how do you make strawberries uh, sweet? Like they find that theirs aren't sweet. Like I don't have that problem, but I don't really do anything special with mine. But what I did notice is if you pick the strawberries when they're just turning red, that they will be slightly sour. And it's only when you cut into them that you see like they're slightly more pale in the inside. So if you can, I would leave your strawberries, just go that little bit slightly darker red and then pick them because then they'll be like in the height of their ripeness. It's a little bit easier to know if raspberries are ready to be picked because they actually come away from the the top of the where they're growing. I'll show you. So they kind of fall down a little bit and that's when you know and they literally just slip off and you can pick them that way. Like there should be no resistance on them when you're pulling them. But with strawberries, it's slightly different. But I just find if you wait till they, obviously they turn red, and then I find like, depending on how warm it is, they go just that slightly little bit darker. And then when you cut them open, most of the flesh inside will be a really beautiful kind of light pinky red, but not pale. The more white that's inside, I think you could leave it go a little bit more. So I also decided after the tragedies of my poor potatoes that I would uh, do a little bit of retail therapy. So I headed down to uh, my friend um, down the road and she has a community allotment um, that she does with her kind of engaged. It's like a community centre for all the world. It's like a social enterprise. So it's all kind of all charity sort of thing. Like it's non-profit kind of setup. Um, and I got a veg box off of her over the winter and I absolutely loved it. She has a polytunnel and all those things that she can grow throughout the winter that I can't um, but I headed down there because she said that she would help me if I ever needed anything um, else for the garden like plants and things so she actually got me some beautiful plants and I'm thrilled to actually just be putting money back into something that's for a local community that provides jobs for local people and yeah provides foods for families in the local region that's all organically grown um, so I love going down and seeing her and seeing what she's got on. So I'll show you some of those um, plants that I bought there earlier. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled with them. They smell amazing, mostly herbs. Um, and I picked up a packet of lemon balm. Um, if I can grow a lemon balm next year, that would be the dream. Absolutely love that stuff, cups of tea. Unbelievable. And I did find out that if you rub it on your skin, it works as an insecticide. Not an insecticide, is that what it's called? You know, like when things bite you, whatever that's called. Um, if you rub the leaf on your skin, the, the midges don't like it. So that's enough of me rambling. <laughs> Let's get on with the gardening. And it's raining again. So here's everything I got from my lady down in the allotments. And she got me, I got a load of stuff from her and I'm really chuffed with it because everything looks amazing. So first and foremost, I got my lovely lemon balm and look, she tied it up with a little rope. I just think that's so cute. So. I'm going to pop that into teas and also when the weather gets a bit nicer and we're going out for walks with the dog I will try rubbing this on my skin and seeing does it keep the mozzies away so yeah beautiful lemon balm tastes so good in teas really relaxing so nice to have in the evening you know um, yeah really really enjoy that just boil a bit of kettle of water pop in a few sprigs and yeah just let it steep for like five minutes and then you're re ready to have your cup of tea so I've got my lovely lemon balm and I've got a mint plant, so I'm going to keep that in a pot. So I just need to find a nice pot for that to go into, and I'm going to keep that. So I'm not really sure what variety this is. It's got really cool looking flowers on it, um, really cool looking petals. So some purple ones, and then there's like a deep sort of like cinnamon colour, but I don't think it is cinnamon mint. I must text her and ask her what variety that is. Um, so that, that'll stay in a pot because mint grows like a weed, so we don't want it cropping up everywhere. So I've got that. And then I got two types of basil. So I've really struggled to grow my basil this year. I have a little bit in the window box, but it kind of crops up and then dies, dies back straight away when it's only like say three or four millimeters high. So I'm not sure why that is, but I had loads of basil last year and I made so much pesto and I'm like really, really need basil. <laughs> and I'd like to plant some underneath the tomatoes as well just to keep pests away and things like that because there's not actually anything under there as like a companion plant at the minute. Yeah, I've got some lovely green basil. Um, I've got four, four green basils. They look really beautiful and healthy. So super happy with those. 
and I got some purple basil. This stuff is just a delight. I mean, look at that. Purple basil. How lovely is that? When she said she had purple basil, I was like, yeah, I'll take some of that. So yeah, she grows everything herself from seeds. They're similar to me. Doesn't smell as strong as this green basil, I don't think. Yeah, green basil smells stronger, but this just is just a delight to look at. You know me, I've, put, I've picked a few things this year that are a bit different in colour, so really thrilled about that. And what I'm thinking is these plants look really lovely and strong and I might, I'm going to propagate them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not might, I am. I'm going to propagate them. Um, I've never propagated before, so what I might do is show you how to do that or show you how I think I might do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to propagate these, I think. Um, I would, I would normally pinch them out so they get a bit bushier. So there's obviously only one main stem on these and I would normally pinch them out kind of when they get about seven centimetres and then make them bushier. But I can still do that with these, I think. So yeah, really thrilled. Everything looks super healthy and it looks amazing. So I'm really chuffed with those. So yeah, let's, let's propagate these. Okay, so I have a glass of water, a little pot to put some of the leaves in and a a really really clean pair of scissors so I've disinfected these just because I don't want to add any infection to the plants that we've got so I'm going to take one of the really really this really strong stem here and I'm actually I'm going to snip it underneath the leaf node so obviously this is the leaf node here and I'm going to snip it just a little bit underneath so that's what I'm going to do for all of them and then I'm going to do it at a 45 degree angle And then what I'll do is I'll take off all of the other leaves, so all of these, and I'll just leave the top three or four, and then I'll pop it straight in that water. Which is great now, because I actually got some mozzarella cheese on the order yesterday. So I will be having a beautiful mozzarella salad for lunch today, which will be nice. I don't think I've got any lettuce, so it might just be tomatoes, cheese, and basil. There we are. Pop that straight in the water. And then I'll clean this water. I think every every other day I'll swap the water out on it. And it should take about two weeks for it to um, develop. And then I'll plant that out and that should hopefully get bushier because the growth hormone will go back down the stem and it should make it a bit more bushier. And this way, at least it will fit under my tomatoes because <laughs> they're a bit taller at the minute. So just do the exact same. I mean, I don't know if you have to do a 45 degree angle, but that's what my mum always used to do when we were kids and we'd buy our flowers. She would um, cut them at a 45 degree angle. So, mum's no best, eh? <laughs> Got loads of basil to use now. Might have to make a pasta sauce as well. <laughs> Seemingly basil's really easy to propagate. It's one of the easiest ones to do, so. Here's to hoping. Should have got a bigger pot for my leaves. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't got enough space. Oh, look, there's two, possibly three plants in here. I <laughs> love that. Don't you love that when you get a plant, like even from like a commercial shop? And like there's, obviously they sell it as one plant, but you get like a couple of bonus ones inside. So I might split those apart when I plant those, so I actually have more purple. So that's great. So I might just take off, cause I'm splitting them, obviously they're gonna be stressed if I do the roots. So I might just take off the top of just one of these and leave the other ones to grow. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, nothing nicer than the smell of basil. Oh, so. Also on the topic of a shopping spree and a bit of retail therapy, I picked up a water butt. <laughs> so I am a little bit like, not sure. Well, I am sure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here, but um, with that, I don't think I can install it properly because I think the attachments and the equipment I need to do this, I don't actually have. So I might need to go into town. So I'll just show you what I mean. So here, I need to make a hole in there. Like I need to drill that bit out. I thought originally it went into the lid. There's a little hole for the lid and I thought it went in there, 
but actually the instructions say that you are supposed to drill this hole through. So I don't have a drill. <laughs> so I just left it here with the lid off last night because it was raining and I wanted to collect a little bit of rainwater. But once it's up and running and it's connected to the guttering, um, we should then have 100 litres of rainwater to feed the garden with. Um, which is great because it's so much better than tap water. I don't think the plants really like the tap water. I know it keeps them alive, but they seem to do so much better with the rainwater. I was going to do the brassica cage, but I won't be doing that now. <laughs> uh, but good news is I did get the water butt fully installed and it will be absolutely loving this right now. Hey everyone, <laughs> we're back. And uh, the weather's, I've just found a small gap in the weather it probably will start lashing with rain and thundering um, but I thought I just need to crack on and get the brassica cage built because it will be too late. So I've already um, cut the sticks, this was yesterday, I cut them off camera so they're like they're under a meter long and I'm going to build like a box for them and then stick the net over the top that was on the strawberries because I've already swapped out that net so that's what I aim to do and there's the, thun the lightning and there's the thunder. Oh no. Bye!